all know just how well software engineers get paid. But let's just say the job market is absolutely brutal right now. I can't lie to you guys, last year the job application process was so bad for me, it absolutely kicked my ass. I got rejections left, right, and center. Let's just say it was one of the most humbling experiences of my life. So I made it my absolute goal to do everything possible to break into big tech as a software engineer this year. All while documenting the entire process on my social media accounts. 221 days later, I didn't land just one internship, but two big tech software engineering jobs at both Amazon and Autodesk. This is every single thing I did step by step and everything I wish that I knew before I started. All right, so first of all, what coding languages or tech stack should you learn and how do you go about doing that? I started by researching all of the most in-demand coding languages in 2025 and saw that JavaScript was number one. This is very self-explanatory because with JavaScript, you could do all aspects of web development from front end to back end. I already had some experience with JavaScript going into it, so I went one step further and figured out what framework was the most in demand, and I found that Next.js with TypeScript was the result I was looking for. So, for the first month of my journey, I did what I recommend every single one of you do when you're trying to pick up a new coding language or framework, and that's go to YouTube and find a crash course. Ideally, one that's building out a coding project that you actually find interesting. This is because the only way you'll ever learn how to code is by actually coding coding something. So by going through this tutorial line by line and actually understanding everything that was going on, I was able to pick up some basic fundamentals to continue my journey. Now, I didn't want to just be a front end web developer. If anything, I've always been more interested in back end web development. And I'm a firm believer that because I've become a master in Java and Spring Boot, I made myself extremely hireable for big tech companies. And even right now, when I'm interning at Autodesk, I'm literally working in Spring Boot and Java as a backend engineering intern. Now, this is simply because a lot of old legacy code is written in Java. So to give yourself an advantage and stand out, I highly recommend you learn this. When I first started out, I would predominantly watch Amigos Code on YouTube. He's an absolute legend. But but for the purposes of trying to land a job, I wanted to go that little bit further. I knew that AWS, which is a cloud service, is extremely in demand and it's really not taught at all in universities. So to stand out that little bit more, I wanted to do something with AWS in one of my next coding projects. So just like with Next.js and TypeScript, I started by watching this YouTube video. There's another video by Amigos Code on YouTube where he built a full stack project with Spring Boot, but most importantly using AWS S three buckets. This brings me perfectly into the most important part of this video, and that's coding projects. Especially when you have next to no relevant experience on your resume, coding projects will be the only way to showcase to recruiters that you're actually good enough to get hired in a certain role. So it's absolutely crucial that you build some that are good enough for you to stand out amongst all the thousands of other applicants. Let me show you the five that I built and why they were so successful. First of all, I have my very own coding portfolio. And inside of it, you could see links to every single one of the coding projects I've ever built. As a software engineer, your coding portfolio is as essential as your resume. And this is so recruiters can see your work firsthand. So if you don't have one already, spend at least a month working on building a nice looking coding portfolio with links to a bunch of live coding projects. For example, my next one, which is this McGill exam scheduler. This coding project was an exam scheduling app that I built for McGill students. But why in the world was this simple coding project so damn effective? It's because I built something that was used by a thousand and seven hundred people. And then when I would talk to a recruiter in an interview, they would be so impressed because my code was able to impact thousands of other people. So it proved to be reliable and good quality work. Now, this brings me to point number two. The reason you are not getting hired is because you are building shit coding projects that do not follow the full software development cycle. And I don't really blame you because nobody teaches you this as a CS major. So let me put you on super quick. So this is the software development life cycle and your coding project should build something that ticks every single one of these six things. So this includes your normal analysis and design and implementation, but most importantly, testing 
deploying and then maintaining it when you actually have a user base. So many of you will have coding products on your resumes that are just direct copies from YouTube tutorials and wonder why you can't get hired. When in reality, a software engineer's job is not just writing code that runs, it's everything that happens afterwards. And I absolutely promise you if in your next interview, you mentioned how you built a coding project that ticked every single stage of the software development life cycle, you will stand out. But how do you do this? It might sound a bit convoluted, but one of the best pieces of advice that I've heard that really worked for me was build startups and not coding projects. Because then in the best case, you have a coding project with tens of thousands of users that is making you money so you don't even need a job. But on the worst case, you actually have a coding project that's worthwhile putting on your resume that will land you the job you've been looking for in the first place. So let me show you what I did. I spent a good six months of my journey building this startup, which is called Empor. It's Canada's first student exclusive marketplace. As of right now, we're in a beta phase only to McGill, where we have over 500 users and hundreds of listings. So for your next coding project, don't just copy something off of YouTube. Think of a problem that needs to be solved. It could be something as simple as something in your own community, like my McGill exam scheduler. Think through all of the requirements and design process as you normally would. And then after you build your prototype, go through and write a bunch of test code and put that on your GitHub. I guarantee you this will help you go a long, long way. Now, if you want some more inspiration for ideas, here are the two other coding projects that I built. I went to a hackathon and crammed out this coding project, which is my health pal in just two days. Now this other coding project that I'm working on is actually part of my capstone engineering design group. And it's this machine learning satellite on orbit collision predictor. The idea is we wanted to help build a tool for the Canadian Space Agency. As you could tell, these are all extremely unique coding projects and that's why I was able to stand out so much in the recruitment process. Now enough of coding, half of the actual job application process is your resume. So start by going to Google and search for Jake's resume template for software engineers. That first link will bring you to this website called Overleaf and this is what I started using this year. Ever since I switched to this resume format, I've seen my interview success rate triple and it's because you're building something that's ATS friendly, meaning applicant tracking system. This is basically the AI that scans your resume looking for all these keywords and evaluating whether or not you're a good candidate. Now, let me give you 60 seconds of resume advice that I wish I knew a year ago. First of all, you absolutely need to be following the accomplished X through Y using Z method in every single one of your bullet points. For example, one of my best bullet points on my resume mentions how in a production level app, I reduced latency by 27% by implementing caching using Redis. It's such a simple line, but extremely effective, especially when you bold and quantify all of your achievements. For example, that 27% and Redis was bolded on my resume. And this is because a recruiter spends seven seconds looking at your resume on average. So if you bold all of your key technologies and all of your impact, you could kind of impress a recruiter really quickly. Now, once you perfect your resume and all of your coding experience, you're going to get to the hardest part of this, which is the interview prep, because they're absolutely broken for software engineers. Now, after hearing about all of these different coding languages and frameworks you have to learn and the level of good quality coding projects you have to build to stand out in this job market, you might be feeling extremely overwhelmed and I don't blame you. So that's why I partnered up with the sponsor of this video, Zero to Mastery. They're this program that have helped so many aspiring software engineers break into big tech. And that's because they have a ridiculous amount of courses ranging from web development to learning AI or even just becoming a Python developer. So if you want to learn all the necessary skills to land that job of your dreams, they have a course for you. But this is not the important part. They follow something called project-based learning, which is the single best way to learn how to code and get hired in 2025. Let me show you just some of the coding projects that they teach you how to build to get you job ready. First of all, if you don't want to get replaced by AI, you should learn how to use AI. So this coding project where you learn Hugging Face by building your own custom AI model is a game changer. Some of my other favorites are building a Notion clone with React and TypeScript. This would have been great for me when I was first starting out on my journey. And this AI stock analyzer because I just find it so cool. So if you're looking to break into big tech as a software engineer in 2025 and you don't know where to start, or if you want to go from complete zero to mastery, I highly recommend you check them out today with the link in my description. Anyways, let's get back into the video. So an absolute non-negotiable thing you have to do if you want to land that FANG or big tech software engineering job is completing at least a hundred LECO questions. But these are 
absolutely crazy hard to do. So let me put you on to this resource. It's called Nico.io and they have this roadmap for every single interview question you need to learn to get hired in 2025. So I would wake up every single day and solve at least one or two of these Leaco questions. All in all, I solved 217 of them. And that way, when I started to get the interviews, I was actually ready. And honestly, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this is when should you be building coding projects and when should you be grinding lead code? Think of your coding projects as what gets you to that door. So if you have no experience, you can't even get these interviews, build coding projects and put them on your resume. But if you're starting to get these interviews, you will never get through that door and get hired unless you grind lead code for hours and hours. So if you're at a position where you're able to actually get interviews, stop building coding projects projects and just focus on your lead code prep. I promise you it will pay off a lot more in the long run. With your lead code and your behavioral portions, the only thing I could tell you is practice makes perfect. I have fumbled countless interviews, including companies like Microsoft, TikTok, Amazon last year. So all you gotta do is persevere and keep practicing. Try to sit down with some of your friends, do some mock interviews for 30 minutes to an hour. It'll go a long way. Now that was my entire journey over 221 days. If you made it this far in the video, leave a comment below that you're starting your own journey and come back to this when you get hired because I promise you, if you keep showing up, you will get what you're looking for. Leave a like and subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one.